Okay, thank you. Um, excellencies, distinguished panelists and guests, friends and colleagues, a very warm welcome to the 55th annual meeting of ADB Board of Governors. I will be your moderator for this seminar on financing the SDG or Sustainable Development Goals through the Sustainable Revenue Streams. My name is Xiao Hong Yang. I'm the Chief Thematic Officer of ADB's Sustainable Development and Climate Change Department. We have an exciting slate of speakers and panelists today, and I will introduce them as they appear. I'd like to take a few minutes here at the beginning to frame the issue we will be discussing today. About a year ago, the Asian Pacific Tax Hub was launched to provide an open and inclusive pan regional community focused on strengthening domestic resource mobilization and international tax cooperation. At that time, Progress towards the SDG was slowing down a bit in the region, and COVID-19 pandemic further undermined the prospects of achieving the SDG in the region as countries scrabbled with limited fiscal space and debt sustainability. Today, the Asian Pacific region still needs substantial and predictable revenue streams to achieve the SDGs, including greater climate change ambitions across countries, expanded health coverage, and more effective social protection. I'm going to give you a, a brief uh, agenda on today's seminar. So we will present updates on the tax hub, followed by presentations by panelists and event participants on ongoing initiatives to do the three things. The first, is widening the physical space. Second, most importantly, broadening the domestic tax base. And last, strengthening international tax cooperation. The good thing is all invited participants, if registered in an annual meeting site, you can raise your questions for the panelists through the Q&A feature. If time permits, selected questions may be answered live by the speakers. So if you have any questions throughout the discussion, feel free to submit them through Pigeon Hall. All invited participants, if registered in the annual meeting site, can raise questions through Q&A icon on the right side of the page uh, and have a dialogue with speakers and the panelists after the initial session. If you have a smartphone or tablet, you can scan the QR code. You can see on the screen QR. Just launch your internet browser and enter www.pigeonho into the address bar. Next, key in your our event passcode, which is ADB MNL55. Once again, MDB, uh, sorry, ADB MN. Uh, Manila MNL55. So we begin with a joint presentation on the tax hub achievements and activities a year since it is launched. The discussion will be led by my boss, Mr. Bruno Carrasco, DG and concurrently Chief Compliance Officer of ADB's Sustainable Development and Climate Change Department, who will talk about the domestic resource mobilization activities. And John, head of our ADB's Office of, we call it Anti-Corruption and Integrity OAI, John will talk about the International Tax Cooperation Initiatives. So over to you, Bruno and John. Thank you very much, uh, Xia Hong. I'm delighted to, to join this panel. Um, next slide, please. So I'd like to present uh, some challenges that Asia Pacific countries face on the revenue side. Um, to begin with, uh, countries across Asia Pacific uh, have structurally had low revenue base uh, that uh, has not increased uh, that much over the last 20 years in proportion to the rapid economic growth uh, across across the region. 
Um, we have seen that uh, average uh, GDP, average revenue to GDP uh, or tax yields uh, are still some 10% lower than uh, countries that uh, you see in figure uh, one, the OECD countries. Uh, in addition, there is a substantial amount of volatility in terms of tax yields from one year to another. Now, if we now add the impact of COVID-19, as uh, many of you know, as part of this fiscal, uh, there were many initiatives by countries to bring in tax incentives by way of one, tax exemptions, as well as two, tax deferrals. So this has weakened also the revenue uh, collection uh, over the past couple of years. Um, and see on figure two, uh, we've got here three countries where we've got some estimated revenue losses uh, on account of these tax concept concessions. Uh, in addition, now many countries are looking at uh, exit strategies from the tax concession regime. And uh, of course, it is still uh, difficult decisions in terms of uh, the uncertainties that still uh, affect many of these economies. And so there needs to be now a, a fine tuning of how to uh, uh, look at building a medium term strategy over the coming years. Next slide, please. So what are some of the implications? Uh, well, we can see that the fiscal uh, structure, the fiscal stimulus, excuse me, uh, has uh, led to um, increasing counter cyclical spending, uh, as well as the tax incentives that I mentioned earlier. This has led to widening fiscal deficits across most of our countries in Asia Pacific and increasingly larger public debt. Um, now, this has uh, limited the fiscal head countries have to be able to take on additional borrowing in a sustainable manner. So as you can see, uh, one of the uh, key uh, considerations now is the sustainable development goals. And uh, as we've seen with less revenue, there has been a, a slowdown in terms of the ability of countries to meet the SDGs. Looking forward, uh, we see now that there is a, a movement towards a higher interest rate regime uh, across uh, many economies. Uh, that's likely to increase the debt servicing payment for those countries that are highly indebted. Uh, we're also seeing many countries that uh, face uh, uh, currency depreciation. And for those countries holding foreign currency debt, that's also going to increase the, the debt servicing payments. Next slide, please. So an important point to look at now is how the economies have been changing over time. And uh, here uh, we can see the importance of the digital economy worldwide. Um, as figure 15, show, figure five shows, excuse me, Asia is uh, the world's largest e-commerce market. Uh, much of that e-commerce activity is not taxed. And uh, there is of course the prospects of uh, strengthening revenue collection from e-commerce and the digital economy more widely. Uh, my colleague John may discuss this in the context of the uh, base erosion and profit shifting uh, regimes. Uh, now, we also look at um, the some of the other, uh, if you like, repercussions. The COVID-19 uh, pandemic has been that many of the economies uh, much of the economic activity has fallen outside the formal sector and moved into the informal sector, whether it's for taxation reasons, for labor considerations. And part of the effort is to be able to bring back uh, a lot of that, uh, of the informal economy back to the formal economy, and by that slowly regain some of that uh, lost revenue. I think uh, another important point, as we heard uh, from President Massa this morning, taxation has also an important role in terms of uh, looking at how we can address some of the increasing inequalities. And here we can look at uh, measures to increase the progressivity of the tax regime, but also more importantly now uh, with the advent of climate change becoming a, a clear and present danger, we need to look at how we can support that work through such things as implementation of effective carbon taxes. Uh, next slide, please. So many of you may recall that uh, last year uh, we officially launched the Asia Pacific Tax Hub uh, in May 2021 at ADB's 54th uh, annual meeting. Uh, the purpose of the Tax Hub, of course, is to be able to uh, look at how we can 
uh, support open and inclusive uh, taxation platforms, look at such things as strategic policy dialogue across their developing members, and equally important, to share knowledge how countries have been able to address some of these challenges that we've seen and also move towards a, a stronger revenue base. Um, the three key building blocks underpinning the Asia Pacific Tax Hub include looking at the medium term revenue strategy, uh, considering how we can better digitalize tax administrations and automation of these uh, tax offices, as well as the importance of the international tax cooperation. Uh, we have put in place a tax hub secretariat, uh, virtual for the time being, that's working uh, very closely with our developing members to bring out some of the good work that uh, is being planned under the Asia Pacific Tax Hub. Next slide, please. So there has been a number of uh, key, uh, milestones that uh, we have been working uh, towards. Um, so first of all, uh, we have conducted uh, bilateral meetings with developing members. Uh, including the idea of eliciting opinions and gauge uh, the DMC interests. And here we've got uh, some key interests in such things as the medium term revenue strategy, 11 jurisdictions interested, the automation process, 11 jurisdictions interested, and the international tax cooperation, which I think is uh, in increasingly of interest to more and more of our uh, DMCs, including 19. Uh, we've got a lot of interest on TADAT training, on looking at data analytics, big data tools, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. Next slide. We've also undertaken a survey of 39 uh, developing members to look at what are the key areas to support their uh, policy, tax policy objectives and tax administration considerations. And you see here some of the very important areas that uh, we have uh, engaged with them on. Next slide, please. Okay, so we have right now uh, over 400 registrations across developing members uh, in the first high level regional tax conference uh, that was uh, hosted last year uh, in November. Uh, we have now set up a foundational steering committee of the Asia Pacific Tax Hub that is chaired by Dr. Michael Keane. Uh, two meetings uh, have been held, one in February and the recent one in July. The, the, the foundational steering committee is looking at uh, countrywide DRM needs assessments and action plans and looking at governance considerations uh, as we move forward towards a, a DRM strategy. Next slide, please. We've had a, a, a number of uh, seminars and conferences. Uh, as you can see here, these are just a, an example of some of the good work that uh, the, the team has been doing. Next slide, please. And we have also dedicated some of our time and effort towards knowledge products. Uh, that raise things as taxation of robots, as you can see, uh, to such things as digitalizing agency, Asia's tax agencies. Next slide, please. Finally, um, we've been looking at uh, domestic uh, resource mobilization activities through the technical assistance and training. And here I would like to fit out uh, countries like Bhutan, Maldives, and Pakistan have been very much involved on TADAT. There has been uh, Georgia and uh, other uh, countries such as Pakistan have been very interested in BEPS. And uh, another area that is also of increasing attraction, property taxes in countries such as Cambodia and Nepal. Next slide, please. With that, I will turn it over to John. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Bruno. Um, let's now turn to International uh, Tax Cooperation, or ITC. Uh, for those of you that heard uh, President Massa during the interview this morning, you will know that this is a topic close to his heart. Um, ADB recognizes that it has a role to play in supporting global efforts to combat tax evasion and aggressive forms of tax planning. As President Massa explained, uh, we firmly believe that these efforts will also help countries improve domestic resource mobilization in support of the sustainable development goals. RETA, or Regional Technical Assistance Program 9433, is well known to many of our developing member countries. Under this program, ADB assists countries that wish to join and participate in the work of the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes, or in the Inclusive Framework on Base Erosion and Profit Shifting, or BEPS. As many of you will know, the Global Forum promotes transparency across borders to combat tax evasion 
And the BEPS Inclusive Framework is a comprehensive action plan to combat aggressive tax planning. To date, 21 countries are receiving assistance. In recent years, we have expanded this assistance to include BEPS actions beyond the minimum standards. And one area in which we are particularly active is the two pillar solution under action one. As uh, Bruno already alluded to, this is uh, particularly important in view of the digitalization of economies and uh, the need to be able to tax revenues even where there's no permanent establishment. Next slide. What have we been able to achieve so far? As you can see here, since 2016, when ADB approved its tax integrity policy, eight developing member countries have joined the Global Forum, shown here as GF. Nine developing member countries have joined the related multilateral convention on mutual administrative assistance in tax matters, shown here as MAC. Moreover, Nine developing countries have joined the BEPS Inclusive Framework, shown here as BEPS IF, and 15 have joined the related multilateral convention to implement tax treaty related measures to prevent BEPS, shown here as MLI. While this is good progress, a considerable number of ADB's 46 developing member countries have yet to commit to and implement the tax transparency standards and BEPS minimum standards. For some, this has had the adverse consequence of being classified by the European Union as non-cooperative jurisdictions, while others have committed to implementing these standards to avoid being designated as non-cooperating jurisdictions. Next slide. To support uh, global efforts on tax integrity, the Asia-Pacific Tax Hub works closely with other development partners, such as the OECD, the Global Forum, and numerous international and regional organizations. This slide shows you just some of the regional events that have been held so far this year. These events have been attended by hundreds of tax officials representing most of our developing member countries. Many of these events have been held virtually, and we are currently organizing a regional consultation on BEPS and international tax matters, which will hopefully be held here at ADB headquarters in December. Next slide, please. At the occasion of the third G20 finance ministers and central bank governance meeting in July in, uh, of this year in Bali, Indonesia, 15 developing member countries endorsed a declaration to strengthen tax transparency in the region under the Asia Initiative. The Asia Initiative is intended to give voice to countries in this region and help them advance the tax transparency agenda with the support of the Global Forum and other development partners such as ADB. ADB will support member countries that are considering committing or have committed to the international tax standards on tax transparency as part of this Asia initiative. Next slide, please. Separately, and in close collaboration with the OECD, ADB is preparing the BEPS 2.0 help desk. We expect to launch it in December of this year. The idea of a help desk came about because there's been strong demand from developing member countries for additional support on the two pillar solution due to its complexity, novelty, as well as the ambitious timeframes. It is critical that DMCs keep up with the fast pace of development, especially those that have not been closely engaged in the work of the OECD and BEPS inclusive framework so far. Next slide, please. In this slide, a couple of ongoing and upcoming activities are highlighted. First, under the tax hub, we promote the use of financial instruments to strengthen the RM, adopt international tax standards, and strengthen technology investment by revenue agencies. For example, we are currently in talks with Pakistan on a policy-based loan for these very purposes. Second, ADB and development partners launch an international tax-specific initiative to support specific tax administrations with a phased implementation 
of international tax standards. With this, I conclude my brief summary of the international tax cooperation initiatives under the Tax Hub and pass the mic back to Xiao Hong. Over to you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bruno, and uh, for this very impressive tour of the achievement of the Tech Hub over the last year. It's very hard to believe so much has happened in a, such a short time. So let me now invite Hirania, Chief of ADB Governance Somatic Group, SDCC, to present his thoughts on the activities of Tech Hub and its efforts to raise revenue. Over to you, Hirania. Thank you, Shahong. Yes. Uh, thank you, Shahong. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bruno, for this very effective, powerful presentation. I am going now to talk to you about a challenge that we are facing in our endeavor to support initiatives related to DRM. Bruno and John already highlighted what all we have been doing, but we are also at the same time facing one important challenge. As Bruno and John highlighted, as well as ADB's president, uh, in the morning today also emphasized that we will scale up our support for improving uh, revenue efforts in all our uh, developing member countries. And you can see in the presentation that there are three, primarily three sources uh, for this purpose. One is, uh, of course, our DRM trust fund, and one is the RETA, which already John talked about it, regional uh, technical assistance for supporting international tax uh, initiatives. And also we are getting uh, our you know, funds from our regional departments. And um, I am now going to talk about the first one, the DRM Trust, Trust Fund, which is a very important source of our uh, support to our member countries in three, broadly three areas, medium term revenue strategies, including TADAT and tax policy reform. Bruno already talked uh, about TADAT tax administration reform through digital transformation. This is also a very important area. Calibrating our DMC's tax system to address digitalization and globalization initiatives. So I'm going to uh, highlight this, uh, the importance of TRADAT, uh, the DRMTF, which requires um, additional resources. Next slide, please. As you can see, DRMTF was set up in July 2017 as a multi-donor trust fund. And we have received so far a total contribution, accumulated contribution of USD 10.2 million. Japan and Taipei China contributed to the DRM trust fund. So far, as of June 2020, we have supported 40 projects. We have also supported many important workshops, seminars, and the knowledge products. Uh, with the help of DRM Trust Fund. That uh, for the last couple of years, uh, 20 and 2021, the demand was very subdued because of the pandemic. Now the demand for uh, DRM Trust Fund support from our regional departments are picking up. So DRM Trust Fund will require immediate uh, replenishment. Next slide, please. So you can see that DRM Trust Fund has been uh, providing very important assistance to our um, member country, developing member countries. You can see that uh, TADA training, Bruno already talked about TADA training. We have already completed imported TADA training in Pakistan. Uh, we have completed TADA, TADA training and assessment in Pakistan. We have completed TADA training in um, Indonesia. We have completed, just completed last week, a TADA training in TADA training and assessment in Bhutan all under all with the support of uh, drm trust fund we are we are using drm trust fund to um, initiate property tax reforms in philippines and indonesia you can see here we can also see many initiatives and importantly many initiatives in pakistan in bangladesh in philippines in indonesia will lead to eventually will lead to important policy actions our under our policy based loan so, so the DRMT Trust Fund has been a very important source of funding for important uh, reforms in these areas related to domestic tax administration as well as international tax cooperation. So uh, I just, I'm just now appealing to all our um, uh, donors 
for uh, support to the DRM trust fund because the DRM trust fund requires immediate replenishments because the demand is picking up. I'll stop here and hand over to uh, Shahom. Thank you, Hiranya. Thank you very much for your presentation on fundraising and DRM trust fund. It's quite impressive. You have already got more than 10 million. That is very good funding resources, but countries are coming up to asking for more. I understand you wanted to appeal to donors to get more funding. Now I have the pressure to invite Ms. Ambrin Iftihar, who currently serves as Additional Secretary, Reforms and Policy at the FBR. Uh, we call it Federal Board of Investment, Pakistan. Prior to taking up her current assignment, she served as a member of FBR Pakistan when I was the country director of PRM and she was there. So she was uh, also the focal point for the revenue board's engagement with the international development partners on reforms and modernization process. And she also oversaw the Pakistan Race Revenue Program and supervised the tax administration diagnostic assessment tool evaluation at the Revenue Board. Abrin will represent Pakistan's experience regarding the recent uh, tax reforms in Pakistan and the way forward, and also the tax hub's contribution to these initiatives. Over to you, Abrin. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Yang. Um, ladies and gentlemen, hello and good day. It is a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to participate in the 55th annual meeting of the Board of Governors as a panelist. Next slide, please. Just a brief introduction. I belong to the Inland Revenue Service of the Federal Government of Pakistan, as has already been mentioned. My areas of expertise include tax administration reforms, trade facilitation, and investment policy. And I'm also very passionate about gender inclusive public policy formulation. Next slide, please. Today's presentation is based on my experience of working in the Federal Board of Revenue as member reforms and modernization over the last two years. I will briefly be talking on four agenda items which are Pakistan's current status regarding the SDGs, the importance of revenue mobilization for attaining Agenda 2030, the key challenges for Pakistan's tax administration, and the FBR's current reform program. Next slide, please. A brief look at Pakistan's current status regarding the sustainable development uh, goals. According to the SDG Status Report 2021, published by the Ministry of Planning, Pakistan has made moderate progress on Agenda 2030. Poverty alleviation, good health and well-being, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, and renewable energy have positive markers, while goals of quality education, economic growth, Responsible consumption and production definitely need more commitment. Next slide, please. To finance our SDGs through revenue mobilization, we must create synergies between the SDGs and our revenue streams, whereby revenues must be specifically channeled to fund SDG activities through our public sector development programs. Themes like gender equality, climate action, and partnerships need integration into tax policy and with other government bodies. The economic ministries must especially come together on a common platform to streamline their processes and ensure alignment with Agenda 2030. Next, please. Looking back, there have been some recurring challenges for our tax administration against the backdrop of the reform process. The absence of a dedicated platform for reforms in the Federal Board of Revenue until recently, and the lack of coordination 
across organizational tiers and with other ministries has been a problem. Effective implementation of all stages of the planning cycle also fell short in the past, especially with regard to establishing a robust monitoring and review mechanism. Next, please. The Federal Board of Revenue has, over the past four years, embarked on a more structured path to reforms in collaboration with our international development partners like the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the Asian Development Bank. The reforms wing was finally able to launch FBR's reform roadmap in the form of the Inland Revenue Strategic Reform Plan in April this year. Next, please. The focus on um, FBR reforms has been a high priority for all governments, primarily because of persistent challenges of complexity of the tax structure, weak policy design, a narrow tax base and a large informal economy, inefficient and time-consuming processes within the tax administration, lack of automation and inadequate attention or on institutional upgrade in terms of capacity building. Next, please. The lessons learned have been incorporated in the Inland Revenue Strategic Plan, which I just mentioned, which covers four main reform areas, improving effective compliance, strengthening tax administration, building institutional capacity, and strengthening the legislative framework. These themes are aligned with our ongoing World Bank-sponsored reform program titled Pakistan Raises Revenue, which also encapsulates these four thematic areas. Next, please. Over the past few months, the reforms team at FBR has been in discussions with the Asian Development Bank with regard to their domestic resource mobilization program. And these are the main policy actions agreed upon. The setting up of a Center for Revenue and Development Studies, gender mainstreaming for development of a gender inclusion policy in the FBR, digital transformation for revenue mobilization and tax administration interventions for taxpayer facilitation. Next, please. The setting up of a Center for Revenue and Development Studies, in my opinion, is crucial for an organization like FBR for the reasons that are flashed on this slide. We need to have evidence-based research for informed policy making. We need to have dialogue at the international, national, and regional levels that impacts revenue productivity. We also need to conduct sectoral studies integrate themes like gender equality and climate change into taxation and we also need to carry out impact analyses of policy and administrative decisions next please the center is envisioned to have a high degree of autonomy and engage experts for carrying out various studies and analyses for informed policy making and also to make sure that it has more independence. Next, please. In keeping with SDG 5, gender equality, we also want to focus on gender-related tax studies and social inclusion and integrate these themes in tax policy and administration in the years to come. Next slide, please. FBR is focused on increasing automation, and I would like to highlight four main reform measures related to digital transformation for broadening our tax base. These are the point of sale integration, track and trace system, synchronized withholding administration and payment system, and the Pakistan single window. Next, please. The point of sale integration is a major reform intervention 
whereby retailers are being integrated with the tax administration for authentication of invoices and minimizing sales tax fraud. Similarly, progress has been made on the track and trace system for tracking production volumes for important sectors. The initial focus is on four sectors, sugar, cement, fertilizer, and tobacco. It is estimated that proper monitoring of production volumes in these four sectors can make a significant contribution to the national exchequer. Next, please. Synchronized withholding administration and payment system, SWAPS, is another recent digitization reform whereby FBR notified agents are required to remit withholding tax to the respective tax commissioners through a digital mode. SWAPS will replace the practice of issuing post-dated checks and will also facilitate the corporate sector. Next, please. On the customs side of FBR, we have a landmark project called Pakistan Single Window, which is meant to facilitate cross-border trade and investment. It will serve as a single entry point to fulfill import, export, and transit-related regulatory requirements. Next, please. Coming now to FBR's engagement with the Asia-Pacific Tax Hub, I would like to convey my appreciation for the assistance and support that we have received from the Asia-Pacific Tax Hub, especially with regard to our TADAT assessment for FBR, for conducting various tax gap analyses, and more recently, the commitment to assist us in setting up the Center for Revenue and Development Studies. Next, please. So with the assistance of our international development partners, FBR is making impressive progress on its reforms journey. Thanks to technical assistance from the ADB, we are simplifying our tax laws and harmonizing them into a one tax code. We are also building a sophisticated IT infrastructure to transform FBR into a tech-driven tax administration. Next, please. These are some of the things that we need to now address. Taxpayer service are extremely important and the ADB is going to help us with that through the DRM program. A whole of government approach is needed by bringing all economic ministries on a common platform for addressing cross-cutting issues. We need to focus on the capacity building of our workforce. And most importantly, we need to continue engagement with our international development partners to build a relationship of trust and collaboration to steer Pakistan forward together on the path to sustainable economic development. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so happy to hear Ambrin for your excellent presentation. And most importantly, uh, so many uh, initiatives highlighted. I'm sure it will also be FBR will play an important role in revenue uh, generation DRM. Thank you for that. I now invite Ms. Marie, Head of Tax and Customers Policy Department at the Ministry of Finance in Georgia. And Marie has over 13 years of professional experience in the field of taxation, including international tax. On behalf of the government of Georgia, she was head of negotiations and helped conclude more than 15 double tax treaties. Since 2013, she was responsible for the implementation process of exchange of information on request standard in Georgia. In 2020, she was elected as the chair of the Conference of the Parties for the Multilateral Commission to implement tax treaty related measures, prevent base erosion and profit shifting. Marie also will share her country experience in maintaining 
in the physical space through the recent economic shocks and also its ongoing international tax cooperation initiatives and the contribution of the tax hub in these areas. Over to you, Marie. Thank you for the excellent uh, comprehensive introduction and uh, good morning and good evening ladies and gentlemen. So as it was uh, today, I have honored to be a panelist and as it, as it was already mentioned today, I am speaking on ongoing international tax cooperation initiatives as well as share George's experience in the fiscal space through the recent economic shocks. And uh, next slide, please. Allow me to start with a short overview of fiscal outlook of Georgia. In 2020, due to COVID pandemic, Georgia's economy contracted by 6.8%. Amid to it, government of Georgia increased its borrowing from international organizations and partners to finance fiscal deficit which for 2020 stood at 9.3% uh, of GDP. This unprecedented fiscal deficit was caused by the reduced tax revenues, high capital spendings, increased health care costs, as well as increased costs in relation to the support to households and businesses affected by the pandemic. Because of the increased fiscal deficit and local currency depreciation, the government debt to GDP ratio reached to 60% threshold by the end of 2020. But in 2021, Georgia's economy showed strong rebound and grew by 10.4%, which was driven by an expansion in agriculture, industry, and services, and gradual lifting of restriction imposed due to COVID-19 pandemic. Improved economic and fiscal conditions actually helped to reduce debt to GDP ratio below 50 percent. Um, and in 2022, it can be said that Georgia's economy is performing better than it was expected. And in the first quarter of 2022, Georgia's economy grows, grows by 14.9 percent and fiscal deficit is expected to be uh, close to 3% by the end of 2022. Uh, so sharp appreciation of general costs by increased effects in flows, strong economic growth, low fiscal deficit and high inflation resulted in sharp decrease of debt to GDP ratio, which is around 40% as of July 2022. Next slide, please. Uh, tourism is a key driver of Georgia economy. The tourism industry of Georgia represented 25% of total GDP in 2019. The shock to travel brought on by the coronavirus pandemic affected on the Georgian economy hard as revenues from tourism fall. Uh, but during pandemic and afterwards, government of Georgia took all necessary measures to support the, the tourist sector. As to date, the sector is uh, recovered from 90%, as you see from my presentation. And so revenues from tourist sector are increasing respectively. Next slide, please. Uh, first international tax initiatives Georgia joined in 2011 was OECD, Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes. First round of assessment on exchange of information on request was positive for Georgia, and it was established in 2016 that Georgia's legislation and practice in the field of tax tax transparency and exchange of information are in line with international standards. Second round of assessment under new methodology of Global Forum on Exchange of Information on request will be launched in the next year. And as you are all aware, this is quite comprehensive process. Therefore, we started early preparation for the assessment. And in this process, ADB is intensively involved and in providing very efficient and significant technical support. Uh, it should be mentioning that since 2000, 
2015, Georgia is an elected member of PRG and also actively and therefore actively participating and contributing to peer review process. Next slide, please. Uh, in recent uh, years, the uh, government of Georgia has been putting special emphasis on shaping international tax system in line with the new standards adopted by the OECD. In 2016, Georgia was among the first countries who became an associate member of the inclusive framework on base erosion and profit shifting and took the responsibility for the implementation of PEPs package, so-called minimum standards, in order to tackle tax avoidance improve existing international tax rules and ensure a more transparent tax environment. To date, Georgia has successfully implemented the BEPS minimum standards. Namely, Georgia implemented the transparency framework for spontaneous exchange of information on certain tax rulings, preferential tax regimes of Georgia we are positively assessed by the FHDB OECD. We also sign multilateral competent authority agreement on the exchange of information country by country reports and put in place legal framework for the implementation for CBCR reporting standards. Also, we finalized implementation of Action 14 standards and etc. So, in the implementation of BEPS minimum standards, uh, Georgia received assistance from the OECD, ADB, and I can say that assistance from was various various types. Uh, namely, the, it was assistance in drafting process, providing trainings, providing experts, and actually what was identified by Georgia uh, donors and international organizations, ADB and um, uh, OECD provided the support. And I can say that for the developing countries with limited resources, assistance received from international organization is crucial and essential in order to achieve the envisaged outcomes. Next slide, please. Uh, to continue with BEPS implementation, uh, on uh, 7th June 2017, together with 70 ministers and other high-level representatives, Georgia signed the multilateral convention to implement tax treaty related measures to prevent base erosion and profit shifting. This is so called in short MLI. So this convention entered into force for Georgia in 2019. It is also noteworthy that in November uh, in November 2020, as it was as it was already highlighted uh, in my uh, introduction, Georgia was elected as a chair of the conference of uh, MLI for three years. And personally, I'm an elected chair. And thanks for OECD again for this opportunity for developing countries. Most importantly, in the years from uh, 2016 uh, to 2020, Vice Minister uh, that time and now Minister of Finance of Georgia, Mr. Lashakotishvili, was an elected member of the steering group of OECD G20 inclusive framework on BEPS. And under his supervision, Georgia was intensely involved in the work related to the tax challenges arising from the digitalization. Thus, uh, Georgia was among the countries who joined the landmark agreements reached on the 8th October 2021. Next slide, please. Notwithstanding uh, the progress uh, Georgia made, Georgia continues working on the implementation process of the BEPS package. And I can say, so we are not covered on the BEPS uh, uh, package, but we are going beyond the BEPS in order to build fairer and more efficient and effective tax system. And everyone can agree with me that international cooperation is essential in the process. And so 
we definitely continue this cooperation. And here on my presentation, you see uh, ongoing uh, tax assistance cooperation. And uh, I would like to start with new OECD induction program. Actually, this induction program will start by the end of the year. And this is induction program uh, under two years, which will last two years. And under this program, uh, OECD is going to assist Georgia in the implementation process of the pillar two uh, under digital tax, uh, digitalization. And uh, besides, it also uh, will be assisted in on the tax and incentives so we'll be exploring any other areas where country needs help and OECD stands ready uh, to provide this assistance so more importantly i want to mention here asia pacific tax hub and adb since creation of asia pacific tax hub georgia is a member of the tax hub and also member of the foundational steering committee so uh, we have proactive and very fruitful ongoing cooperation with tax hub and we highly actually rely on the support we are receiving from the tax hub and as i mentioned in, pre in my previous uh, uh, slides uh, adb and tax hub are providing very huge and essential assistance in the reviewing process of exchange of information on the request for Georgia, which is coming in upcoming months. Uh, also, I want to mention here pilot project with Germany and Germany is helping us uh, to implement CRS standards. Uh, Georgia is committed to exchange these standards by the end of the 2024. Um, and uh, also tax, I want to mention, uh, tax expander without borders uh, program. This is new assistance program for Georgia. We started this program also this year. And under this program, Georgia is receiving uh, audit capacity building um, assistance. Uh, so actually, this was a short summary uh, of uh, ongoing tax initiatives. And once again, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Thank you for your excellent presentation on Georgia experience. Uh, Georgia is such a beautiful country, uh, such an efficient trade and trade facilitation uh, system as well as tax system. So now we still have a few more minutes, about eight minutes, I can look at that. So we are happy to go for a few questions. I received the first question. I'm going to ask uh, Bruno and John about this one. How can the Asian Pacific Tax Hub contribute to a green, inclusive, and resilient recovery? Are there any synergies between the ADB initiatives in the area of climate change and the domestic resource mobilization? Uh, who wants to take this one? Bruno, over to you. Thank you very much for that question. So, as, as we know, um, Climate uh, change is uh, uh, very much uh, a present, clear and present danger. Uh, we just saw, uh, unfortunately, in the context of Pakistan, the massive floods uh, and the destruction that that has created. Uh, we need to use all our policy instruments to be able to address some of the climate change challenges. Uh, we've talked a little bit in the context of uh, my slides, uh, the importance of bringing in green taxation into the toolbox of various instruments that we have to support our economies. As important as moving towards green taxation, we have to look at our subsidies schemes and the fossil fuel subsidy schemes that still exist largely across many of our economies. We need to be able to look at how we can disengage from those subsidies and be able to help transform the economy to a more clean energy economy, uh, a digitalized economy. So that transition process will be heavily influenced by tax policies that we have in place. Uh, this is just one example. Uh, we can do a lot more in terms of audit work, in terms of what are the various types of other uh, mechanisms that economies uh, are providing uh, to that fossil economy and how we can move towards a better, better, smarter taxation, introducing new technologies, incentives to bring in new technologies on clean energy 
uh, efficient energy uh, activities. Uh, these are just some of the examples where tax policies can help uh, significantly in this transition path. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. This is very interesting. Maybe I'm now trying to prepare Ambering for these difficult questions. Uh, as we all know, Pakistan has initiated a lot of reforms and the different IFIs in both tax policy as well as tax administration. Could you elaborate a little bit like on uh, where countries like Pakistan are likely to face the most resistance in these two areas and what they can do, you know, uh, to overcome the resistance. Um, I like your overall ministry's approach. It's not just FBR, but overall, the question is, what can you do to overcome those huge challenges? Over to you, Ambrin. Thank you very much. As far as the resistance with regard to policy making is concerned, I think uh, speaking from the perspective of a tax administrator, I would say that we need to have uh, a more uh, positive engagement with all our stakeholders. And of course, the taxpayers are the most important stakeholder for us. So there needs to be a relationship of trust and we need to work towards uh, encouraging a tax paying culture. And that of course is not going to happen overnight. It uh, requires consistent and sustained effort on the part of the government. Uh, also, I think that uh, the taxpayers would also like to see in a very transparent manner how their tax money is uh, used. So the government also has to engage on that front to make sure that you know whatever development activity is going on is transparent and visible to encourage the taxpayers to come into the tax net. Uh, with regard to administration, as I've already mentioned, we need a whole of government approach. We need the ministries, especially the economic ministries, talking to each other. We need a common platform because uh, the problems now in the modern world are such that we cannot work in silos. So we need to start uh, talking because there are so many cross-cutting themes which require all the ministries to come together to resolve these issues. So that's my take on this question. Thank you. Thank you, Amberin. That is very nice. I have another one, which is a little bit tricky. The tax on tax incentives are viewed by many countries as an important instrument to attract FDI. So the OECD countries' proposals on the two pillar solutions uh, seeks to reduce the tax competition between the countries and set a minimum global effective tax rate. So how would countries reconcile their desire to attract investment with the two pillar solution? Who wants to take that one? I'll take that one, uh, John. You see, you have a uh, one and a half you. minute, which is very short time to uh, address such a complex issue. But really, in a nutshell, I think without uh, international cooperation and coordination, um, these tax incentives are really often a race to the bottom, uh, depriving countries of valuable uh, revenues. So with Digitalization of the economy that, that Bruno also referred to, I think developing countries are expected to benefit more from uh, the redistribution of taxing rights together with the introduction of a minimum corporate tax than uh, from the wasteful tax benefits that we often see now. And of course, to, to cushion the impacts of, of potential less foreign direct investment, it's really important that institutions like ADB and others help member countries uh, build up capacity in other factors that are uh, important investment determinants, such as uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, regulation, institutional capacity, uh, and the like. So overall, I think countries will be better off if they participate in uh, in, in these uh, international tax uh, standards. Let me stop there. Thank you so much, John. Uh, the last question over to the Georgia, uh, Marie. Georgia undertook 
a really very successful DRM initiative and reform after 2005, that you have raised substantial revenues. What lessons can other DMCs learn from Georgia experience over to you? Yes, thank you once again for the question. And it's really uh, the issue that we took a lot of reforms. And the first I can say is that you know, the country should not be scared about the reforms. And But before I take reforms, you should be really careful. You have to um, measure all pros and cons, what sh these reforms uh, can be for you. And I can say that really we are uh, participating a lot of initiatives so this is, uh, as I mentioned, not only tax initiatives, but ongoing reforms. We have a very uh, big agenda ahead. And so we already took the target assessment, as uh, everyone knows. And uh, uh, so a country uh, should be very careful, firstly, and should be analyzed how it will be proper for their country's tax policy and economy. So this is my remark short. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Brilliant. Uh, distinguished guests, members of the press, colleagues and friends, this brings us to the end of the institutional event. We thank you so much for your active participation, questions and interests. We hope you will continue to engage and support this very important Asian Pacific tax hub. With the short one year after launch, it has achieved so much and is liked by our member countries. So we wish you to have continuous support to us and support these activities, especially during difficult time like now as we move forward. Thank you so much. A very good evening to all of you. Thank you.